California State Senate just voted for a law that could bring back racial preference in the government and universities. The California voters will make the final call. Welcome back to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. You know what, I, I really hate to do this, but I'm going to show you a disgustingly racist law that is still on the books in California today. This is part of California's constitution. The state shall not discriminate against or grant preferential treatment to any individual or group on the basis of race, sex, color, ethnicity, or national origin in the operation of public employment, public education, or public contracting. I know. Can you believe it? That section was added to the state's constitution in 1996. That was the result of a California ballot measure called Proposition 209. So for more than 20 years, the state has not been allowed to discriminate or give preferential treatment based on race or sex. Fortunately, this year, the California State Legislature has taken a major step forward in removing that ugly law from the books. On June 24th, the State Senate voted for a constitutional amendment, ACA 5, that would reintroduce racial preferences for who gets a state job or contract or who is admitted to a state university. The California Assembly had previously approved ACA 5 earlier this month. As Senator Steve Bradford said, it's time to do the right thing. It's time to end the racism that exists in California. Thank you, Senator. I know it might have been easy to get distracted by the coronavirus or economic recovery, but you focused on what's important. Ending the end of racial discrimination. But even though the state Senate and Assembly both passed the amendment, we're not out of the woods yet. Californians still need to vote for the amendment on the November ballot. And that ballot measure is called the Repeal Proposition 209 Affirmative Action Amendment. If you've never lived in California, the way it works is that voters can directly decide some state laws through ballot propositions. Which sounds like a great idea, but also leads to so much confusion that people have made songs to try and explain all of the propositions. It's a proposition song, you should all be singing along. Because the ballot is too long. In 1996, Californians voted yes on Proposition 209, which ended race-based preferences. It's a relic from America's racist past. Oh, um, the photo's not in black and white. That's just uh, the smog. Anyway, Proposition 209 was created by a big old racist. What's that, Shelley? Okay. It was created by Ward Connerly, a former University of California regent. Proposition 209 essentially banned affirmative action. Affirmative action had started in the 1960s as a policy to stop race-based discrimination in government. But by the 1970s, it had morphed into a set of policies across government, universities, and many companies to specifically give preference to underrepresented minority groups. The effect on the California public university system was that admissions became based partly on race, giving preference to blacks and Hispanics over whites, even if their grades and SAT scores were lower. But Proposition 209 in 1996 banned affirmative action. That made California one of only eight states that banned affirmative action at the time. And this year, Idaho also banned it. Here's what Ward Connerly said about affirmative action back in 1996. If there's any lesson that we can learn from the rest of the world, it is the fact that America's experiment with democracy will fail if we divide our people into racial enclaves and allocate jobs and contracts and college admissions on that basis. But California has changed a lot since 1996. Nowadays, California has more Shake Shacks, more Democrats, and more Hispanics than whites. So come November, California voters will get to decide whether to put affirmative action back on the books, allowing universities and government institutions 
to once again give preference based on race. It's not clear whether it will pass. According to a survey by the Pew Research Center, the majority of Americans, including the majority of blacks and Hispanics, don't think race should be a factor in college admissions, which just goes to show you how deeply racist this country is. Affirmative action is controversial, obviously. Over the years, there's been a growing push in California to end Proposition 209 and restore affirmative action. And other states have considered it as well. In fact, last November, Washington state had a similar vote on affirmative action and narrowly voted to keep the ban on the books. And remember, this isn't just limited to education. It deals with whether governments and public colleges and universities can consider race in their hiring and admissions decisions. Plus, it's not just race, but sex as well. Not the fun kind, the gender kind. Now, this does not mean racial or gender-based quotas, which would limit the number of people based on race or sex. No, that was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court in 1978. But the new California constitutional amendment would mean race and sex can be looked at as factors in government hiring or college admission again. So, what's driving the effort to repeal Proposition 209? Well, it's because there are some troubling statistics. Latinos make up nearly 40% of the state's 40 million residents, but represent less than 25% of the University of California's 2019 fall enrollment. About 6% of Californians are African American, but at both UC and California State University, 4% of students are black. Why the difference? Some argue it's because of systemic racism. Here's Assemblywoman Shirley Weber, the author of ACA 5. The ban on race conscious and gender conscious remedies do not allow for us to deal with root causes of systemic failures, and it prevents us from designing effective policies and programs to correct our ongoing history of bias and exclusion. State Senator Richard Pan said, why do we support ACA 5? because we understand that by the time you get to the college application process, structural racism ensured that people are not at the same starting point, no matter what your talent is. So, what is systemic or structural racism? There are competing definitions. Some people say systemic racism, structural racism, and institutional racism are the same thing. Others say they're different. That institutional racism would be like Jim Crow laws, which mandated things like segregated drinking fountains and segregated education. But systemic racism means that even though those Jim Crow laws have been gone for more than 50 years, there's still a racist legacy that affects everyone. And structural racism is when the Eiffel Tower talks about how dirty the pyramids are. I know, it's a lot to take in. I tried to look up systemic racism in the Merriam-Webster dictionary, and there was no definition, though apparently they're working on writing one, after a recent college graduate asked them to. I don't know what the new definition will be, but I do know that whatever they come up with, it won't make anyone happy. But not everyone agrees systemic racism even exists. California State Senator Melissa Melendez says, I patently reject the notion that this state is racist or that this country is racist. This is the least racist country on the planet. But California State Senator Stephen Bradford says, I know about discrimination. I live it every day. We live it in this building. Quit lying to yourselves and saying race is not a factor. So you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and use the definition of systemic racism given by Ben & Jerry's ice cream. Racism that infects the very structure of our society is called systemic racism. The idea is that even if there are no laws that discriminate against individuals based on race, it's still happening because racism is like the air we breathe. It surrounds us all, which makes it very difficult to get any data on it. And it's led to the idea that if you are white, you are racist. And if you say you aren't racist, it's because you're unwilling to acknowledge your racism. That's according to Dr. Robin D'Angelo, author of White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism. 
a white, how does a white person say that they're not racist? I think white people should remove that phrase from their vocabulary. I'm not racist. It's not, I, trust me, it's not convincing to black people. But when I'm talking about the racism that I have, the racism that you have, it's, it's the result of living in a society in which racism is the foundation. We all absorb it. We all absorb it. There's no way we could exempt ourselves from it. Wow, tonight's show host Jimmy Fallon is looking a little worse for wear. I'm guessing it's because he's unwilling to acknowledge his racism. You know what would cheer him up? Some Ben and Jerry's Tonight Dough Ice Cream. Ben and Jerry's, educating everyone about systemic racism and ice cream. So the idea is that racism is so embedded in the system we can't see it, but it's the reason why 6% of Californians are African American, but at both UC and California State University, 4% of students are black. So if we use affirmative action again to help more blacks and Hispanics get into California public universities, does that address the systemic issues of why they're struggling in the first place? I'll get to the data in a second. But there is one group very concerned about putting affirmative action back in place. Asian Americans. What? You thought I was going to say white people? Caucasian Americans are now only 19% of UC students, down from 38% a quarter century ago. So the number of white students at UCs today is half of what it was when Proposition 209 was passed 24 years ago. But now, Asian Americans represent 15% of California's population and 16% of the California State University system and 33% of the more elite University of California system. So, as this LA Times op-ed says, Asian Americans are overrepresented as students in elite universities, which is a nice way of saying, there are too many Asians, which is pretty much exactly what President Bill Clinton said. When California was discussing Proposition 209, President Clinton said if they got rid of affirmative action, California universities may be filled with nothing but Asian Americans. What did you expect? Bill Clinton is white, which means he's racist. So anyway, the idea is that putting affirmative action back in place would help remedy systemic racism. The U.S. had slavery and then Jim Crow laws. Those didn't end until 1964, which wasn't that long ago. So it doesn't feel like a logical stretch to say we're probably still feeling the impact of that today. But when it comes to affirmative action, many Asian Americans feel like their struggles aren't recognized. Remember, the U.S. also had the Chinese Exclusion Act, which didn't end until 1943. And other anti-Asian laws didn't end until 1965, the year after Jim Crow laws ended. So affirmative action is designed to fix historical inequalities, but not all inequalities are equal. And there's some evidence that affirmative action, at least at universities, might not be effective at solving the problem it's intended to solve. In 2011, Duke University did a study on the effects of Proposition 209, which ended affirmative action in 1996. It found that minority graduation rates increased after Prop 209 was implemented, a finding consistent with the argument that affirmative action bans result in better matching of students to colleges. In other words, minority students were better matched to universities based on ability, not race, and graduated at higher rates. In fact, although minority enrollment dropped at elite UCs after Proposition 209, the black four-year graduation rate at UCLA doubled from the early 1990s to the years after Prop 209. This study from UC San Diego, one of the more elite California universities, found that when campuses of the University of California stopped engaging in race preferential admissions, the number of African American and Hispanic students decreased at the most highly ranked campuses in the system, but they increased on many of the other campuses. And immediately after Proposition 209's implementation, the underrepresented minority failure rate collapsed. 
According to the book Mismatch, How Affirmative Action Hurts Students It's Intended to Help and Why Universities Won't Admit It, Proposition 209 had three effects on underrepresented minorities in the UC system. It, one, increased graduation rates, two, increased GPAs, and three, increased the number of science and engineering majors. Affirmative action may sound like a good idea, but it turns out that the results are more complicated. We'll have to wait for November to see whether California voters decide to bring it back. So, what do you think? And can anyone give me a good explanation of systemic, institutional, and structural racism? You know what? Never mind. I'm, I'm just going to go eat some Ben and Jerry's. What? Systemic raisinism? That's definitely the worst flavor. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.